hey, we're so glad you folks take time out of your busy week to see us on Tuesday. And what are we talking about tonight? Something I've been around for a long, long time. I guess all my life. And that's cast iron. My five greatest tips on how to take care of it, what to put in it, what to season it with, how to clean it even. My number one tip for cast iron. Cast iron. Now, folks, when you, when you season, and we'll get into that and tell you what to season with, but so many people right off the bat, because they done been to Sam's or Costco's and they buy them about 400 rolls of paper towels. I'm just telling you, when you got a paper towel and you got oil on it and you're going to season iron, it ain't happening. Because you're transferring lint, covering it with oil, more lint, more oil, more lint, more oil. Next thing you know, you know, went down to the drugstore guy and you said, hey, y'all got some nair. I need some nair to take the hair off my Dutch oven. This stuff is gonna taste like bounty paper towel. You get to use them, throw them away. I'm telling you, it is not good. So when we're gonna season, we're gonna season right. And I've been using a lint-free rag. So we ain't got this hair that's growing in our Dutch oven. Now, tip number two, folks. You don't cook something in a piece of cast iron, and I get a lot of folks this question nearly everywhere we go. Say, I got one of them flat griddles, or I got one of them corrugated little cornbread pans that look like an ear of corn and everything else. Everything is sticking on there, it's hard to clean. Well, while that is hot and you're fixing to bring it off that burner on the stove or maybe out of the oven, turn that water faucet on over to the hot side. Get it good and hot. Now, you're going to have to get something you can hold it with, a glove, a couple of pot holders, or whatever, and watch out and be careful now. Put that in that sink, turn that steam on, that steam is going to turn loose. When that water hits that hot cast iron, things are going to go somewhere, I promise you. You may have to use your little old scraper or something, but always, if you do, use wood on this. Never iron against iron. So I will give you another tip that I think you need to know, too, and that is, folks ask me this a lot. Now, I'm going to cook some beans in my cast iron pot, and when I go to cooking them, I didn't burn them, but the water turned black. Now, when you put straight water in cast iron and you turn it on and you boil, you're going to eventually turn loose a little of that seasoning. And it's going to float up there on top and sort of look like an oil slick. Now, I don't boil water-based stuff in here, and I'm talking strictly water. Never boil beans in cast iron, do I? Hey, say we use this stuff, but we're through for the year. Fall of the year has come. We done been through hunting season. We need to store it for a while. Folks, this is probably one of the greatest things you need to know. Now, if you're going to store a Dutch oven any length of time, there are two or three ways you can go about this. Now, I cussed them paper towels a while ago. You know I did, but hey, they got a purpose in storage. Cast iron got to have a wick to breathe. You got to be able to let some air get in there. But if you live in some really humid climate and you're still afraid that you're going to get rust in there, hey, take you a cup of minute rice dump it in the bottom, put this back on here. That minute rice will get any dab of moisture that might sneak in there, I promise you, way before any kind of rust is going to take place. So paper towel for a wick, piece of cloth towel, anything, but it's got to breathe, got to transfer. Cup of rice if you're living in some humidity or you're going to store it for a long period of time. Number four. What do we season with? Well, that's a question that's asked me a lot. I've been using something that's never let me down for years and years, and that is 100% pure olive oil. That's where that lint-free rag comes in. Just a dab, don't take much, but remember, it's gotta be hot to season. Round the bottom, round the sides, you're good to go. The reason I use olive oil, hey, it's never went rancid on me. My mother used to use Crisco bacon grease sometimes. They'd store an old oven under the cabinet, stick it under there, might not use it for two or three days. Now when they took the lid off, sort of smelt bad. Might have got that rancid. This will keep an oven sweet. Now sure, this is a lower burn temperature than some of you might like, but I'm a slow and go man. I ain't never had no trouble with this. But I got a tip the other day, I'll tell you. People say, why don't you use flaxseed oil? Now flaxseed oil is good, it is. And it is really good at a high temperature bonds to cast iron well. You go down there to my local co-op or a little old farm store and say, hey, I need some flaxseed oil, they're going to laugh at you. 
but I found out where you can get it cheaper than you can buy it 100% pure out of the bottle. Go to CVS, go to your local pharmacy, tell them you want some flaxseed oil caplets. Got to be 100% pure. Shake you two of them little rascals out of there. And if you got heart trouble, shake three. Take one while you season the iron. Cut the end of that rascal off, squeeze it in there. Here's one more. But remember, it's got to be hot, lint-free rag. Wiper in there, you're good to go. Why do we need to season in the first place? To keep food from sticking, but also to give it that good glass finish and food tastes better that comes out of cast iron that is seasoned. And we do season the outside occasionally. Now, if we're seasoning the outside of cast iron, I'm not using none of this, what you call really good stuff. I'll use some old cheap vegetable oil around the outsides, under the bottom, on top of lid, or under the skillet every time. Number five. Cast iron was made when I got it. It was a raw piece of cast. You didn't have to worry about this. It was smooth. Or some of that old Griswold like this, smooth as glass most of the time when you picked it up. But the stuff they're putting out now, they call it pre-seasoned. I call it Rocky Road like ice cream. I mean, that stuff is grady. It is rough. Run your finger across there, you can feel it. Now, when I get one of them, I'll tell you what I do to it first. I go modern. Got me some of that 80 grit sandpaper on this here little vibrating sander, and I'll rub it all around through there while it's running. It don't take long. I'm not going plumb down to raw cast iron. I just want it smooth. Take that rough finish off they got, and then we'll go back to re-seasoning. But don't be afraid to break this out. You ain't got one of these, you can lose one of these. It don't take much. You can get her done, I promise you. But remember, after you do get it done, rinse it out with hot water, back on the fire, let it dry out, and then we gotta re-season. Stick her in the oven, let it cook for a while. But you gotta do that at least four times, folks, if it's brand new. But if you don't ever get it sanded down smooth, you won't never get that surface that is easy to clean and easy to cook out of. Why start with something rough when we can get it back to where it needs to be? I think you can see that finish. Smooth as glass. We're so glad that y'all come along and joined us tonight. It's a great day above the grass, and it'll even be greater. You get you some cast iron and take care of it.